live right now. Tonight, a Premier under fire. Mark McGowan's office locked down in a suspicious package scare. Death threats and vandalism four days out from the state election. Plus, the Crown in crisis talks over Harry and Meghan, the deafening silence from Buckingham Palace about to be broken. Perth children injured in a school bus crash that caused peak hour gridlock. A road worker's leg amputated after a hit and run crash on Great Eastern Highway. A breastfeeding mother forced to spend an excruciating 13 hours in emergency. An exclusive report on WA's sick hospital system and injury misery for the Dockers for the start of the AFL season. This is Nine News Perth with Michael Thompson. This is Nine News Perth with Michael Thompson. Good evening. The Premier's Rockingham office is a crime scene tonight and one of his staff members has been taken to hospital in a suspicious package scare. It follows vandalism and a death threat against Mark McGowan. We're going to cross live shortly to that site in Rockingham. But let's now look. Uh, there's a large police... Sorry. The Premier's... We're going to go firstly to... Let's go closer to the city. There was another attack on the Premier and a huge Labor billboard to face with Nazi and communist symbols. Both major parties are tonight facing accusations of bad behaviour. And it, as the state election, the race starts to turn ugly. The Premier is Hitler. A twisted message about power four days out from an election and it's getting hostile. This Osborne Park billboard was quickly replaced after the vandals struck and the campaign trail descended into insults and allegations. It is a dinosaur. He does not belong in Parliament. Liberal MP Alyssa Hayden had brought the media to Byford, complaining that crime was out of control after this high-speed hoon crashed into her neighbour's property on Friday. And sadly, the police were under-resourced on Friday night and it took them an hour to respond. But she soon took aim at Calamunda's Labor MP Matthew Hughes, who faces allegations of bullying staff. Liberal leader Zach Kirkup joined in. The Premier suggested that Matthew Hughes is a decent man. I have to reject that entirely. I've spoken to Matthew. Uh, he has, as I said, a very different version of events. Uh, and uh, in electorate offices, as indeed in all offices, uh, there's often uh, personality issues. Then it was Mr Kirkup's turn to be on the receiving end over material suggesting he has a dark past on the internet, posting foul-mouthed comments about former opposition leader Eric Ripper and current minister Alana McTiernan, too offensive to repeat. I can't imagine that's the case at all. Not true? No, not true, not true. But the posts and other website references that date back to 2005 bear his name and personal details soon after he was handing out business cards that read Zach Kirkup, future Prime Minister. Look, I'd have to go back and have a look at that. I can't, I can't recall it. This will be a day of the election campaign remembered for all the wrong reasons. A death threat, an attack on the Premier's electorate office, his billboard image plastered with Nazi messaging, one Labor MP has been accused of bullying his staff and the Liberal leader has denied posting crude and offensive comments about senior Labor figures in the mid-2000s. Both sides of politics are now calling for calm, but I'm betting the gloves have just come off and we can expect more mudslinging tomorrow. Gary, thank you. We're hoping to take you to Lucy McLeod, who's outside Mark McGowan's Rockingham office shortly. But in the meantime, the Queen is locked in crisis talks as pressure intensifies for Buckingham Palace to respond to Harry and Meghan's confronting interview. It's been more than 30 hours since the accusations of racism and negligence, and the fallout is sending shockwaves across the world. Of all Harry and Meghan's explosive claims, the allegation that a member of the royal family raised concerns about how dark their son Archie's skin colour could be while Meghan was pregnant is proving by far the most incendiary. It feels like a bomb has gone off and we're sort of at the moment raking through the debris. As the dust settles, it rests on this question. Which royal was it? There's a big guessing game all around the world. Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? And yeah. I thought it was very touching that Harry he still is choosing to protect the identity of whoever that was. Yes, and he did not share the identity with me, but he wanted to make sure that I knew, and if I had an opportunity to share it, that it was not his grandmother mother, nor his grandfather that were a part of those conversations. Even after Oprah's blockbuster interview, the blows keep coming. Did you leave the country 
because of racism? It was, a large, it was a large part of it. In this newly released clip, Prince Harry tells of a conversation he had about perceived racism in the British press. He said, you need to understand that the UK is very bigoted. And I stopped him. I said, the UK is not bigoted. The UK press is bigoted, specifically yeah. the tabloids. Is that what you mean? He goes, no, the UK is bigoted. And I said, I, d I completely disagree. But unfortunately, if the source of information is inherently corrupt or, or racist or biased, then that filters out to the rest of society. Meghan and Harry have dropped so many bombs in this interview, and now they are going to watch, um, watch the fallout. One of the bombs, a claim the Duchess of Cambridge made Meghan cry. Kate today appearing stony-faced in London before featuring in a pre-recorded video for International Women's Day. It's inspiring loads of other young women and young girls to continue in your footsteps. The firm clearly carrying on with duties, but deafeningly silent on the controversy. Boris Johnson, too, dodging questions about the royal racism claims at a COVID-19 press conference. I've spent a long time uh, now not uh, commenting on uh, royal family matters, and I don't intend uh, to depart from that today. But there are growing calls from inside and outside UK government for the palace to launch an investigation into those allegations, as well as Meghan Markle's claim the palace HR didn't intervene when she pleaded for help, confessing she was suicidal. I think the allegations are so serious. If you consider that they've launched an inquiry into the bullying claims, it only seems right that they should launch an inquiry now into racism claims. I've been writing about this family and following them for 40 years, and I have never, in any of those people that I've followed, seen an, a, an iota of racism. And I find that comment the most difficult of all to swallow. To be charitable, I'm, I, I would suggest they have misinterpreted things. On the same day, flags were raised at the Houses of Parliament to mark unity in the Commonwealth. Division ran deep in Britain. You continue to trash her. OK, I'm done with this. No, 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 sorry. No, uh, sorry. So, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can trash me, maybe not mine. No, no, no. no. See you later. I'm being... Sorry, can't this do this. This is absolutely diabolical behaviour. Really hurtful to a lot of people, to be honest, especially because I'm black as well. I don't think they've done themselves any good at all. A shame. For a queen whose 68 year reign bears the hallmarks of quiet strength, privacy, and above all, a determination to disengage from public debate, there's no avoiding this very public scandal now engulfing the private lives of the royal family. Of course, it's going to take the shine off monarchy if there's the suggestion from people within the institution, actual royal that there is a degree of inherent racism to that institution, but equally to a member of the royal family. I mean, that's not a great look and never will be. In London, Kari Ann Greenbank, Nine News. Well, there's still a wall of silence here at Buckingham Palace. It's understood the Queen has been locked in crisis talks about whether to respond and what to say. British media are reporting that Palace staff suggested putting out a statement last night, essentially just reiterating the royal family's love and concern for Harry and Meghan. But the Queen put a stop to it because she wanted more time to consider. Any statement from the Palace could carry significant ramifications. On the one hand, if the royal family choose to defend themselves, well, that could inflame tensions further. On the other hand, if these claims, particularly the allegation of racism, go undefended, well, that could further damage the reputation of the royal family, not just here in Britain, but around the world. The revelations didn't stop with the royals. In 20 minutes of unseen footage, Meghan took aim at her father, accusing him of betrayal. And this afternoon, he hit back hard. A sequel to a blockbuster interview, new outtakes released today with Meghan Markle's father in the firing line. So I just need you to tell me, and if you tell me the truth, we can help. And he wasn't able to do that. Mm. And that, for me, has, has really resonated, especially now as a mother. Meghan detailed how the paparazzi wooed Thomas Markle with gifts and how he succumbed. Everyone has accountability. Look, mm. they've hunted my mom down. Right. And, and you've she never, didn't speak to the top You've ones. never heard her say a, a word. A She's word. remained in silent dignity for four years watching me go through this. No one took any time to protect any member of our family. 
We were attacked by the press every day. Uh, when they decided to talk to me, I'll stop talking to the press. It wasn't just her father that the Duchess took aim at, but also her outspoken half-sister Samantha, who famously penned a tell-all about their rocky past. What is your relationship with her? I think it would be very hard to tell all when you don't know me. She changed her last name back to Markle in, I think she was in her early 50s at that time, only when I started dating Harry. Samantha Markle today, quick to slam the claims. I don't know how she can say I don't know her and she was an only child. We've got photographs over a lifespan of us together, so how can she not know me? Her half-brother still clinging to hope of reconciliation. I really, really hope that someday, when all this goes away, we can all get together without the press and just have a normal get-together and family and, and, and brush all this under the carpet and, and go on. Buckingham Palace may have been silent, but the White House wasn't. Um, for anyone to come forward and speak about their own struggles with mental health and tell their own personal story, that takes courage. That's certainly something the president believes. On average, 17 million Americans watched last night, making this interview a royal success for Oprah. The Sussexes may have cut the cord with the royal family, but they've set themselves up with a new audience for this new life they're creating here in Southern California. They need the media and they need the, the public profile to help flourish and grow the foundation. They'll be able to control their narrative from now on. In the United States, Alison Petrowski, Nine News. And Carl Stefanovic and Layla McKinnon will host a panel of royal experts for a Nine News special event. The Crown in Crisis is on at 9 o'clock tonight, straight after Married at First Sight. Let's go back to our top story now. The Premier's Rockingham office is a crime scene tonight and one of his staff members has been taken to hospital in a suspicious package scare. It follows vandalism and a death threat made against Mark McGowan. Jacqueline Robson, what can you tell us? Well, Michael, I can tell you there's a large police presence at the Premier's Rockingham office tonight. The entire stretch of road has been closed off as detectives investigate exactly what's happened. We know someone ran into the electoral office at about four o'clock this afternoon, throwing what looks like a foil object through the window of the building before running away. The entire office and surrounding businesses were immediately evacuated and one staff member was taken to hospital as a precaution. Paramedics are on scene as has Matt Cruz examined the scene to work out exactly what this object is. The Premier wasn't there at the time but has just arrived. Here's what he ha he's had to say. We don't actually know what's in the package uh, but because there's some concern about what was in it, they're being treated by the ambulance officers. We're obviously in a very heightened environment at the moment and I just urge everyone to um, you know, behave appropriately uh, considering uh, the elections on Saturday and I just urge everyone to uh, not do uh, things like this. Now, this hasn't come out of nowhere. The Premier's security has been on high alert since a death threat yesterday where a man at an early polling booth in Hillary's told people he had a gun and would shoot Mark McGowan. Police are tight-lipped around the details of this investigation, but we know this man is still on the run this afternoon tonight. Michael? Disturbing. Jackie, thank you. Perth children have described screams and shattering glass as their school bus collided with another. Ten people were rushed to hospital as investigators tonight work to determine how it happened. A normal trip to school shattered by panic, screams and a shocking crash. As the St Norbert College bus filled with high school students collides with a trans Perth bus on its daily route. All I felt like was just me going forward and like hitting a metal pole. Yes. All the glass came over us because we were in the front and I just heard my sister yelling Daisy, Daisy, so I just ran straight to her. The impact sending passengers flying. People were like screaming and like crying and stuff and then I like started seeing smoke. The two vehicles collided about 8 this morning during peak hour on Ranford Road in Canningvale. The school bus driver left trapped for nearly an hour in the mangled mess. Looking at the bus driver, he had like cuts all over him. I was just like, no, nah, I couldn't do it. Firefighters ripping the back of the bus apart to free the school children. Ten people were rushed to hospital, with dozens checked and treated on the side of the road. Could have been a lot worse, and I think because maybe it was peak hour work to our advantage because the traffic was only going reasonably slow. It's usually a 
you know, it's a 70 kilometre zone, so he could have gone a lot quicker. Luckily, there were only seven students on the white school bus when it smashed into the Trans Perth bus. Commuters on that vehicle tell me a year 10 student took charge calmly, talking to the group and calling triple zero. He was like, everyone, has anyone called an ambulance? No, I'll call the ambulance, and he did it pretty efficiently. After that, it just was pretty calm. The crash closing the busy strip for more than two hours. As investigators work to find out how and why this happened. Cayman Gok, Nine News. An innocent traffic controller has had his leg amputated after a hit and run crash on Great Eastern Highway. The 35 year old was one of two workers injured, his brother today thanking those who saved his life. Minutes away from finishing their shift, two traffic controllers had no control over a dangerous driver heading their way, working next to this ute when they were hit from behind. Tristan Thompson most seriously injured. Investigators say doctors were forced to amputate the father of two's right leg. He was simply doing his job last night. Um, uh, obviously no one could have imagined the outcome of the phone call we woke up to this morning. His colleague Fabio Martins Rogue also hurt. The men were trapped between the ute and its trailer after a Mitsubishi SUV smashed into the pair on Great Eastern Highway. The 30-year-old helping Tristan Thompson out of the vehicle just before midnight. Main roads had closed a westbound lane to the on-ramp off the Graham Farmer Freeway for bridge maintenance work. Police say the driver continued on, discovered less than a kilometre away on Francisco Place. We're obviously all still processing this morning of what, what occurred. 211 people have been killed or injured in roadwork zones across WA between 2015 and 2019. Slow down, pay attention and comply with the speed limits will keep road workers safe. It needs to be a wake-up call to main roads with all the infrastructure work that's going on in WA now. This needs to be a serious wake-up call. Tristan Thompson sharing this warning on social media just last month. How hard is it to slow down? One of the first faces the 35-year-old saw at the scene, a friend on call as a paramedic. Very thankful for all the guys that's, you know, saved his life. And Michael Stamp is at Royal Perth Hospital tonight. Michael, you have an update on the injured workers. Michael, Tristan Thompson is facing a long road to recovery. Tonight he is stable in the state trauma unit here at Royal Perth Hospital, but he could be here for weeks. He'll then move to Fiona Stanley Hospital to begin rehab on his catastrophic injuries. His colleague is also stable here this evening. And in breaking news, a 31-year-old man from Esperance has just been charged with three uh, offences, including failure to stop or report. He's due to face court later this month. Michael. Michael, thank you for the update. The Victorian Premier is in intensive care in hospital tonight after falling on wet stairs at a holiday home. Daniel Andrews has several broken ribs and a damaged vertebra and will remain in ICU for the next few days. He's asked for privacy as he recovers. And Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt is also in hospital tonight with a suspected infection. He's been given antibiotics and fluids and will remain there overnight. His staff say he is expected to make a full recovery and have clarified his condition is not, repeat not, related to the COVID-19 vaccine he received just days ago. Shirley Biggs has your weather details now from Hillary's tonight and Sherry, a humid start to the day. Well, Tom, it's still pretty muggy out here now, around that 30 degree mark, but the sea breeze came through really late this afternoon. So if you did make it outdoors, you would have felt that that air was very heavy today. But it was uh, offshore winds to start with, which brought the heat. It was hotter than expected in the city at 36 degrees, much of the same for Swanbourne, but it was coolest up in Bickley today at 32 degrees. Now, tomorrow we will see a low pressure system forming just south of Perth. That will spin some northwest winds into the metro and that just means more humidity added to the air so tonight will be very uncomfortable Tomo we still have a few warmer days to come up but the relief is on the way and I'll tell you when that is along with the rest of the forecast coming up looking forward to it Sherry thank you a breastfeeding mother's emergency department ordeal a special investigation on WA's unhealthy hospital system that is next a Perth rideshare driver accused of sexual assault preying on a young passenger. How the AFL is honouring Danny Frawley and shining a spotlight on mental health. Dubbo's economy is booming, but which jobs are really in demand and where you can get a pay rise? A special report. And later, is fish oil really the key to a healthy heart?
A breastfeeding mother has described being forced to wait in emergency in excruciating pain for 13 hours before being seen by doctors. Hospital wait times have blown out to their worst in four years and experts fear our already stretched system won't be able to cope with a COVID outbreak. In excruciating pain, Michelle Minchin was forced to wait while a blood clot spread through her body, left in the Joondalup emergency department without help because there wasn't a bed free. Is there even like a blanket or pillows or something I can put on the floor and lie down and they were like, I'm sorry, we're not allowed to do that. I didn't actually get into the private ward until 4am. Her story, like many others, an 85-year-old waiting in emergency for six hours before seeing a doctor. Another described an 11-hour wait. This patient naming Appeal Hospital, saying they discharged a 93-year-old in a taxi and in agony. We just do not have a big enough hospital system for the demand in Western Australia with our growing population, less private health insurance, uh, more complex problems around. Hospital bed wait times, the longest they've been in four years. Patients forced to wait 147 hours a week at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital, the worst in the state. Close behind Royal Perth Hospital and Fiona Stanley. The AMA says this problem is political. Admit to the problem and fix it, otherwise we're going to have more and more people suffering and dying unnecessarily outside hospitals. The last budget allocated more than $160 million dollars in funding to hospital services to help deal with an increase in demand but experts say that money needs to go towards boosting staff numbers by at least 500 plus another 400 hospital beds if we want to address the current issues plaguing our hospital system. Kelly Haywood, Nine News. A Perth rideshare driver is facing serious charges tonight, accused of preying on a young passenger. The woman claims she was sexually assaulted during a late night trip through our southern suburbs. Driving solo to Fremantle Court, a DD driver accused of taking one ride to dark places. Mr Pallas, is there anything you want to say about these allegations? Police claim Imam Hussein Pallas attacked a young passenger after she booked a lift through our southern suburbs. The woman, aged in her early 20s, was picked up from Mandra shortly after 1am last Sunday. The late night ride allegedly taking a sinister turn in Murdoch, where she claims she was raped and indecently assaulted. Police haven't revealed which platform the 37-year-old was driving for at the time, but Dee Dee today confirmed his access to that app was immediately removed in light of the allegations. But at this stage, they are just that, allegations. Imam Palace has yet to enter a plea to the charges and is due back in court next month. Louise Rennie, Nine News. A 37-year-old motorbike rider is tonight fighting for life after a horror crash caused peak hour chaos and closed part of Quinana Freeway. Police say the man's bike collided with a car near the Leach Highway exit in Brentwood just after 7 o'clock this morning with traffic stretching back kilometres. Tonight he's in intensive care at Royal Perth Hospital as major crash detectives investigate what caused the smash. Football fans will be encouraged to wear face masks to and from Optus Stadium when the AFL returns this month. WA's Chief Health Officer says spectators will be asked to wear coverings when entering and exiting the stadium as well as on public transport before and after the games. But mask wearing won't be made compulsory unlike at Adelaide Oval. The AFL is shining the spotlight on mental health with a clash in honour of St Kilda legend Danny Frawley. His family renewing their plea for better understanding with the clash known as Spud's Game to raise money for mental health programs. Not for the first time at Moorabbin, Danny Frawley was the focus. Just goes without saying, he would be just absolutely so chuffed. Anita Frawley and two of Danny's daughters joining former teammates and mates in general to launch the round two match to be played in his honour. But there will be another battle being waged that night dealing with mental health. Quite often heart so hard you don't know what to say, how to respond. But that listening is key. You have to listen and, and, and there's ways that you can help. Frawley died when his car careered into a tree near his hometown of Bungaree in September of 2019. What this is now is... Is, is going to be his legacy and what a legacy it'll be because, you know, I've, I've had my issues, we've all had some struggles along the way, you know, the depth of them is only you know that. 
Frawley's struggle has become a very public one since his death and his family and friends are hoping his plight will lead to a better understanding and help eradicate the what-ifs. I was at the house and saw the car minutes before he set off to Ballarat. What if I called in? What if, what if, what if? A win over Melbourne in round two would be a fitting tribute to Danny Frawley. The real win, though, would come with saving lives. That's critical, that listening, and that just sit and listen and are you OK and, you know, time to talk. Tony Jones, Nine News. To finance now, the Australian share market and dollar both lifted today but remain below recent highs. Business reporter Chris Kohler has the details. Wall Street briefly hit a fresh record high overnight, helping get Australian shares off to a strong start. The All Ordinaries was up 0.4% at the close, with companies like Macquarie, QBE and Qantas all making healthy gains. The index is now bang on 7,000 points. But our tech companies followed the likes of Apple and Tesla lower, as rising bond yields have investors worrying about the future of growth stocks. The Australian dollar was mostly stronger today. It's buying 76.7 US cents, 64.4 Euro cents and 55.4 British pence. The boom is back so how do you cash in the skills in demand and jobs where pay rates are rising? That's next. Is fish oil really good for your heart? What doctors say we should be eating. The daredevil who went to dangerous lengths to avoid a fair and the big bank undercutting its rivals with a rate of 1.79%. Expert advice on whether now is the best time to fix your mortgage. Nine News brought to you by Bankwest. Bank less. With consumer confidence at an 11-year high and the WA budget declared the best in the world, many will be wondering how they make sure they don't miss out on the benefits of a new boom. Tonight we can reveal the skills in demand and which jobs are seeing pay rates skyrocket. The last time Atlas Roofing was this busy was the mining boom. Phone calls flat out, yeah busy everyone trying to get us on board but can only do as, as much as we can so tradies stretched by WA's construction frenzy recruiters agree the boom is back and commodity prices are high and there's lots of activity but you need people job vacancies have now returned to mining rich levels border restrictions squeezing out workers specialist skills like diesel mechanics experiencing a pay hike the hourly rate for example has gone from $50 an hour to $70 an hour, which is a 40% increase. WA's peak business lobby says cleaners, hospitality workers and kitchen hands remain in high demand. <sighs> The Chamber of Commerce and Industry placing labourers and salespeople among the top jobs up more than 65%. Community and personal service workers 43%. Technicians, trades and machinery operators all rising by 30% or more compared to last year. Industry insiders say bricklayer rates pre-pandemic were around $1.70 to $1.80 a brick. Today rates are anywhere between $2 and $2.50 a brick. On par, if not greater than the boom of 2014 and for the first time, Nine News can reveal how WA's recent COVID lockdown affected jobs. Exclusive data from Seek shows the short shutdowns saw a slide in WA job ads before recovering from the shock. February was down 2% on January for job ads, the only state in decline. Victoria had an almost 8% increase, a short blip before the WA economy roared back to life. Jacqueline Robson, Nine News. And if you want to get one of those in-demand jobs, there's new help to reskill with just weeks until JobKeeper payments end. The Prime Minister's announced extra cash for apprentices. After three weeks spent mopping up scandals, <laughs> Scott Morrison wants to hit the reset button. I am absolutely interested in creating jobs. And my first job is to ensure that Australia continues to come out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, extending a scheme designed to help tradies hire new apprentices. To date, over 122,000 apprentices and trainees have been supported by that wage subsidy. The government will pay for one half of an apprentice's wages for a year and employers have from now until September to sign up. It's expected to create 70,000 jobs and cost just over a billion dollars. It's aimed at trying to cushion the blow that will fall when the JobKeeper wage subsidy ends in three weeks and there are fears of a hard landing. Thousands of businesses going bust and tens of thousands of Australians losing their jobs and that is 
quite frankly, unacceptable. But it's a fight the Prime Minister would prefer over the fallout from rape allegations that have sidelined the Defence Minister and the Attorney General, Christian Porter. I don't anticipate him to be back in the Parliament next week. Nine News has confirmed that the Coalition's received an official letter from Labor's whip saying that one of its MPs will sit out votes in the lower house while Christian Porter is on sick leave. With the numbers in the house balanced at 75 all, that's a rare piece of good news for the Prime Minister and giving up that advantage will outrage some opposition MPs. Chris Yulman, Nine News. Millions of students in England have gone back to face-to-face -face learning for the first time this year. With optimism, the COVID vaccination appearing to outweigh caution. It's the third time schools have come out of lockdown since the virus took hold early last year. But teachers are already expressing concern. Mask wearing by students is not compulsory. A daredevil has gone to dangerous lengths to avoid a fare hitching a ride on a tram through Sydney's CBD. The man was captured hanging between two of the carriages down George Street, saving on a ticket, but one slip and the cost could have been so much higher. We've been told for years that eating fish will ward off heart disease, but scientists have raised questions about just how beneficial it really is. Natalia Cooper explains. We live and learn the wheel of medical science turning again when it comes to fish and helping our hearts. This new study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Data was collected from close to 200,000 people in 40 countries over almost a decade. It found that if you already have cardiovascular disease, eating two serves of fish a week lowers the risk of heart attack or stroke. But the benefits weren't seen in healthy people. There's been a lot of evidence over the years, uh, epidemiological evidence, suggesting that people uh, that eat fish uh, tend to get less heart disease and I think our recommendation uh, still stands. Despite the findings, experts say fish is still a healthy and nutritious food. The Heart Foundation continues to recommend all Australians eat two to three servings a week. Some of the best types are salmon, mackerel and sardines. Ahead, the big bank offering rock bottom rates, just 1.79%. Is it time to fix your home loan? And a train packed with passengers destroys a stuck bus. But first, it's time for sport with Matthew Pavlich and Pav the Dockers. Injury woes are going to hit hard. Uh, yes, scan results are in, Tomo, and stars are set to miss games of footy. Frio under attack as goal scorers take a seat on the sidelines. Happy Cats planning to head home with another trophy. And the Wizard from the West drawing a plan for more Group 1 success. Dockers big man Rory Lobb has avoided surgery but could miss the first half of the season with a knee injury. On a horror day for Frio, scans revealing Lobb's ACL is strained but not torn. The Dockers avoiding a total disaster, but Rory Lobb's knee injury is still serious. The scans have indicated that uh, Rory's done significant damage to his posterolateral corner in his knee. Uh, there's a lot of other damage in there as well, including a strain to the ACL. The ex-giant stuck in a brace for the next six weeks. A hamstring strain sidelining All-Australian forward Michael Walters. That'll be a three to four week uh, return to play. Bailey Banfield in a moon boot for a fortnight with ankle syndesmosis. Banfield gets up with the, the sore leg for the dive at the legs. Scans revealing a calf tear for Mitch Croden out for up to six weeks. New Eagle Zach Langdon back on his feet after a heavy derby hit. Tim Kelly, Liam Ryan and Nick Natanui opting for an early exit. Scans confirming emerging Brisbane star Cam Rayner won't feature this year after rupturing his ACL. Awkward grab of his right knee in all sorts of pain, so um, this doesn't look good for the young star. Shoulder surgery will see Bulldog Hayden Crozier miss the season opener. Hamstring awareness blowing out to a two-month layoff for Bombers swingman James Stewart. And former Roo Majak Dor is officially a demon edging out Jeff Farmer's son, Kobe, for a spot on the list. Jimmy Williams, Nine News.
WA batsman Jake Carter will continue to attract interest from other states after a half century at the Gabba. The run fest with Queensland ending in a draw. Though there were some worries when WA slumped to 4 for 67. 25 year old Carter with an unbeaten 57 caught up for the first time in 12 months. The Bulls relieved to snare the dangerous Cam Green for 35. Third catch there and Jerry Burns swallows that one and they lose the third and it's the big wicket of Cameron Green. WA and Queensland now meet in a Marsh Cup one day on Thursday. Trevor Gleeson says the thought of returning to Perth next week is driving the Wildcats, not claiming the inaugural NBL Cup. The Cats are now favourites for the mini title and the $150,000 prize. Weeks in a Melbourne hub. <laughs> And the top cat is still smiling. Perth sitting on top of the NBL Cup ladder with the last two games to come on Friday and Sunday. Then home time and games in front of the Red Army. We certainly want to go back home with a little bit of momentum and get back in the RAC arena and get close to a full crowd in there. The guys have been talking about that the last couple of days. So hopefully we can uh, finish this trip off. Coming off three games in five days, players are enjoying some welcome time off. Here you live in everybody's back pocket 24 hours of the day, so it's good just to have a little bit of an escape. Melbourne Rain thwarted yesterday's plans to play golf, but not watching the Bulldogs-Demons clash at Marvel Stadium. We were very fortunate the Bulldogs put us in a suite, so we weren't uh, socialising or mingling, but we got that ticked off by the NBL. It's back to business on Friday with a clash against the New Zealand Breakers, who've won two of their five NBL Cup games. Even though that might be down on the ladder, their, um, their last couple of games have been great. You know, they had a good win and just lost against Melbourne United. So um, we'll be ready for them. Tanya Armstrong, Nine News. Champion Perth jockey Willie Pike is well placed to claim back-to-back all-star miles at Moody Valley. He'll ride Arcadia Queen when she jumps from barrier five in Saturday's $5 million race. We've got a good chance and a good barrier, so I'm, I'm running out of excuses if I get it wrong, aren't I? Damien Oliver's Russian Camelot races for the first time since the Melbourne Cup, the Colt drawing barrier two. Chelsea have stretched their unbeaten run to 11 games. Everton West Ham are right behind them in fifth, beating Leeds by the same scoreline. And party time for Novak Djokovic overnight. The Serbian cheered by thousands of fans while being treated to an extravagant light display in the centre of Belgrade. The celebration for the Joker was for breaking Roger Federer's record of 310 weeks as world number one. Djokovic did wear a mask, but there was little sign of social distancing as he signed autographs and hugged some younger fans. Good turnout there for Djokovic. Now, tomorrow night, Tomo, we go one-on-one -on -one with Jack Redden, huh. uh, of course, the Eagles on a Wednesday yep. night, and we get the captains as well, so both Nat Fife and Luke Shuey ahead of round one. Starting to feel it, can't you? The Almost there, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's getting close. close. But poor old Dockers have got some injury problems. They have, not good. Matthew, thank you. Breaking news on another suspicious package at a Labor MP's office. That is coming up. Plus, the Big Bank offering Australia's lowest home loan, undercutting its rivals with a rate of 1.79%. So, what's the catch? And the smash everyone saw coming, but no one could stop. Didn't burn bridges. They blew them up. Were you silent or were you silenced? The latter. Tonight, every royal bombshell scrutinised. Who is the royal racist? Conversations about how dark his skin might be. Can the monarchy survive? I didn't want to be alive anymore. Is the royal family damaged beyond repair? A must-see nine new special, The Crown in Crisis, tonight. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest stories making news in Perth this evening. The Premier's Rockingham office has been evacuated and hazmat crews are on the scene after a suspicious package was thrown through the window. And there's breaking news right now. Another suspicious package has been discovered at the Rockingham office of Labor MP Madeleine King. Police are now investigating. Ten people have been rushed to hospital after a school bus collided with another. One of the drivers left trapped for an hour before being freed. And Meghan Markle's father has hit back after her explosive interview with Oprah, saying his family fell victim to the press and he's only speaking out because his daughter hasn't contacted him. Well, borrowing money for a home has never been cheaper and Westpac is taking loans to record new lows. The big bank now has the lowest two-year fixed rate on the market. 
Westpac is the third big bank to cut fixed rates in a month, but it's definitely giving its competitors a run for their money. The bank has slashed its two-year fixed rate by 0.2% to 1.79%, the lowest in the market. By comparison, CBA's two-year fixed rate is 2.14%, while ANZ and NAB are at 2.04%. Rate City Research shows 44 lenders have cut their home loan rates since January 1, and 57 lenders are now offering loans below 2%. If the RBA keeps the cash rate above zero, then it is likely we're nearing the bottom of the cycle. But we cannot rule out further cuts to fixed rates right now. There is immense competition in the market. As with anything, check the fine detail. Fees can be hundreds of dollars a year. In Westpac's case, there's a $395 annual fee. Plus, you'll also need at least 30% equity to qualify. Most banks also have caps on making extra repayments while on a fixed rate. And most won't offer offset accounts on those types of loans. And trying to get out of a fixed rate loan early can be very expensive. A train travelling in the Swedish city of Gothenburg has smashed into a bus stuck at a crossing. The bus was empty. The driver had managed to run to safety, but 50 passengers were still on the train. Incredibly, only three suffered bruises. A pilot has been reunited with his family after spending 36 days lost in the Amazon jungle after a plane crash. He shed 25 kilos, surviving on birds' eggs and wild fruit, and was saved after stumbling across a group of chestnut pickers. The 36-year-old was treated in hospital for dehydration and minor injuries. He says the love of his family kept him going. A curious dog has sparked a delicate cliff rescue after running off from its owners in San Francisco. Firefighters were forced to climb down the sandy surface to save the pup. The operation was a success with the Labrador quickly back on solid ground and its owners will always use a lead from now on. Shirley Biggs is back with all of your weather details next and she's live from Hillary's. Welcome back. Well, we are in for another balmy, almost summer-like night again tonight and a beautiful sunset down here at Hillary's Marina. It's still lingering around 30 degrees at the moment, but late this afternoon we reached our top of 36 and the sea breeze uh, only reached the city very late in the day, but tomorrow winds will shift to a northwesterly as they wrap around a low pressure system just to the south of Perth and that will mean more humidity and muggier conditions, particularly tonight. Meanwhile, ahead around the country. Cloudy and 26 degrees in Sydney. Melbourne, some blue sky breaking through and a cooler 21 degrees. A warmer 27 in Adelaide. And taking a look around WA now, fairly uneventful weather-wise across the state. Just the usual storms through the very northern parts of WA heading for a top of 33 degrees in Kununurra. Looking mostly sunny for the rest of the north. And as the trough lingers over the west coast, there is a widespread chance of storms, but there won't be much rain to these systems. 25 degrees in Albany and 31 degrees in Bunbury. Now we'll see that shift into northwesterly winds tomorrow in the late morning along the coast. Seas and swell are both sitting at just a metre and there is the slight chance of a storm in the morning but it should generally stay to the east and south of Perth. 31 degrees in Rockingham, Fremantle and Joondalup as well. Now we are in for a very muggy night. It won't dip below 22. Just some partly cloudy conditions tomorrow. The slight chance of a storm in the morning and a top of 32 and another hot night into Thursday a top of 26 to follow partly cloudy conditions finally a cool change coming through on Saturday down to 14 degrees in the morning and heading for 27 sunny and 29 on Sunday and potential storms are forecast early next week but Tomo that cool change on Saturday will bring some drier air to Perth as well so we'll uh, see that return to our usual autumn weather Looks like a beautiful forecast and looks like a stunning night at Hillary's tonight. Sherry, thank you. That is Nine News for this Tuesday. Thanks for your company. A current affair is next. Enjoy your evening. Good night.